So it was a pretty warm day today for January, so I decided to come out here and look at some different spruce trees. All spruces are in the genus Picea. So in this video, I will teach you how to tell the difference between different types of spruces. So we'll talk about the white spruce and the blue spruce and the Engelmann spruce. But before that, I wanted to really quickly talk about why you should care about spruces. Uh, so I came up with four reasons. There's many more, but here's at least four reasons that you should care about this tree. First of all, spruces are used in paper making and construction. They're really, really important trees um, for those purposes. And in fact, the Wright brothers' first aircraft was built out of spruce wood. Second, they're really important for making musical instruments. The wood of the spruce works really, really well for string instruments. In fact, Stradivarius used it to make his famous violins. Third, spruces are commonly used as Christmas trees, which I think is important. Interestingly, the country of Norway donates a huge Norway spruce each Christmas to the cities of London, Edinburgh, and Washington DC, which they use as a Christmas tree. And then finally, and probably most important, the spruce is very ecologically important. Uh, the spruce and other conifers make up the taiga, or sometimes called the boreal forest, which is a huge uh, part of the world. It's in the northern parts of Canada and Russia, and it's important for lots of wildlife. Um, many songbirds migrate there during the summer, and it also contains a lot of our world's carbon. Um, so this is a very important part of our world that needs to be protected. Um, now, before we talk about different types of spruces, I wanted to really quickly remind you how to tell the difference between other, between spruces and other conifers, like pines and firs. Um, to be able to tell the difference between spruce trees and pine trees and fir trees, first you need to look at the number of needles. Um, pine needles will always come in pairs. Spruces and firs will come out singly from the twig or branch. And then spruce needles kind of look like they're attached to little pegs on the twig or branch. This is a blue spruce behind me and this tree is very common especially where I am in Utah. So there's a lot of varieties of blue spruce and some of them look more blue than others but Chances are, if you find a spruce and you're in Utah or in the Mountain West, it's a pretty good chance that it's a blue spruce. The needles of the blue spruce are very prickly, and they have this kind of waxy coating on them that makes them look blue. The cones of the blue spruce are pretty long. They can be anywhere from two and a half to four and a half inches long, and the scales of the cones are pretty flexible, and they have kind of teeth in them, they're not smooth. This is an Engelmann spruce. It's actually pretty similar to a blue spruce in a lot of ways. So the needles of the Engelmann spruce are a little bit more flexible and less prickly than the needles on a blue spruce. Also the cones on an Engelmann spruce are just a little bit smaller than cones on a blue spruce. This tree behind me is a white spruce, um, Picea glauca, and it is one of the northernmost trees found in the wild in North America. It's definitely a survivor. It can survive temperatures of negative 50 Celsius, that's negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's a pretty amazing tree, as well as being very beautiful. According to some people, the needles of the white spruce have a kind of like strange or bad scent when they're crushed. It didn't seem like a bad scent to me, but that's supposed to be one of the distinguishing characteristics of this spruce. Um, also, the twig doesn't have any hair on it, so you can look for that. One of the easiest ways for me to distinguish this spruce is that the cones are really pretty small. The, also, 
The scales on the cone are smooth. Uh, they don't have any teeth in them. This is a brewer spruce, or Picea breweriana. It's actually a really rare spruce in the wild. It's native to the Klamath Mountains, which are in southwest Oregon and northwest California, and that's the only place it grows natively. The brewer spruce has very flexible branches, and this is actually an adaptation to deal with all of the snow in the Klamath Mountains. Um, but because of its flexible branches, it has kind of a weeping look, so sometimes it's called a weeping spruce. Uh, the twigs are a little bit more flat than some other spruces, um, but the needles are still attached to pegs on the branch, just like any other spruce. I couldn't find any cones on this tree or underneath it, but if I could find cones, they would be purple tinged. Before we talk about a few spruces that you can find in North America but that aren't native to this continent, I wanted to mention a few native spruces that I wasn't able to find because they occur in different parts of the United States. One of them is the black spruce. This one is often found with the white spruce in the boreal forest or taiga region, but it's usually smaller than the white spruce and it has smaller cones. Um, the cones on the black spruce are half an inch to one and a fourth inches, and on the white spruce, they're one and a half to two and a half inches long. So a little bit different there. The cones of the black spruce are purplish when they're young, but then they become a more brown color as they get older. Then there's the Sitka spruce. It's a really cool tree. It occurs in the northwest part of the United States, and you can identify the Sitka spruce by its needles. They're white striped on the top, and they are flat. Other spruce needles are kind of four-sided. They're square in cross-section, but the Sitka spruce needles are flat. The cones on the Sitka spruce are orange or brown, and you can tell it apart from the Brewer spruce, which occurs in a similar location uh, because the Brewer spruce cones are purple or purple tinged. Finally, the red spruce, or Picea rubens, occurs in the northeast part of the United States, and you can tell it apart from the white spruce because the cones are a little bit smaller than the white spruce cones, but they're a little bit bigger than black spruce cones. So they're about an inch and a fourth to an inch and a half long. And the needles are yellowish rather than bluish. This is a Norway spruce. Uh, Norway spruces often have these really large bases at their trunks. Just like all spruces, the Norway spruce has really sharp needles that are attached to little pegs on the branch. It's a bit hard to see them from here, but Norway spruces have really long cones compared to some of the other spruces. There are actually weeping varieties of the Norway spruce as well. They're still gonna have the same kinds of really long cones and also the same kinds of needles. This is an oriental spruce or Picea orientalis. The oriental spruce is a little bit smaller than some of the other spruces. The oriental spruce is not native to North America, but it's planted as an ornamental tree here. The easiest way to tell it apart from other spruces is that the needles are really, really short. They're almost less than a centimeter. So very, very tiny needles, but a very cute tree. This is the cone of the oriental spruce. Um, I feel like it's actually pretty big for how tiny the needles of this spruce are, but uh, the cones are pretty, or the cone scales are pretty smooth on this spruce. This is a Serbian spruce tree, or Picea omorica. It isn't native to North America, but it is planted as an ornamental tree fairly often. The Serbian spruce usually has a very slender trunk. The needles of the Serbian spruce are really pretty. You can see there this kind of bluish whitish color underneath, but they are kind of green or dark green on top. 
Serbian spruce cones are quite small and they're this kind of pretty cinnamon brown color. Oops. Okay, so that was a lot of information, so I thought I would summarize it for you in this diagram that I made. This includes uh, all of the different types of spruce trees that we talked about in this video, and it has pictures of their cones, either a picture that I took or a picture that I found on the internet if I could not find the actual tree. It also includes a distinctive feature for each type of spruce that can help you identify it. So I hope you enjoyed learning about spruces and I hope you feel like they are worth uh, noticing and learning more about.